Hello and welcome to church. I really hope you enjoy today's service. I really hope that you have a great time with us together in St. Paul's. I really hope that we all journey together with God. I really hope that we all see a little glimpse more of God today. May you know God's love today. If this is your first time with us, welcome. Welcome to the family. Welcome to being part of us. We want to just invite you to come in and be yourself. Come in and just drop us a message, drop us a text, drop us a phone call just to say, hey, we're here. We're journeying with you. I really want you to be encouraged about who God is, about who God made you to be, and about the journey that God has us all on together. Now we know that things are changing so rapidly at the minute, so I just want to encourage you that we are looking into restarting services again, live services. We are looking at what we are going to do in the next steps. So over the next week or two weeks, we will be telling you and informing you of exactly what we're going to do together. But in the meantime, I really hope that this service will impact your life, that you will know the love of God right now where you are, that you will see God move. We're going to have a quick thought, we're going to sing some songs, and then I'm going to continue sharing from Elijah. Today's message is simply rounded up by it's okay not to be okay. So I just really hope that you're encouraged by what we're saying today, by what God's teaching us today, and that God's presence will just fill the room you're in right now, that God's love will just fill your heart and that the overflow of your spirit will just be joy towards what God has been doing in your life and through your life. So God bless you all and may you know his love, may you know his guidance. God bless. Hello, it's good to be with you again. I'd like to entitle what I'd like to share with you today is crying out to Jesus. Isn't it wonderful that events in the Bible speak so mightily and powerfully to us in this present day? And in Mark chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 48, we read that Jesus and his disciples had passed through Jericho and as always a large crowd had joined them. And as they left the village, they met a blind beggar named Taimai. We try to imagine for a moment, very difficult to imagine, being blind all of our lives, never being able to see our friends, our family, never being able to see God's incredible creation. And as Jesus passed by the spot where time I sat, the spot where he sat every day, doing what he did every day, he was begging. And time I heard that Jesus was passing by. So what did he do? Did he just sit there quietly, hoping that Jesus would pay him attention or notice him? No, he didn't. He cried out, he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You know, sometimes when situations engulf us, when we can barely pray, dignified prayers, just don't happen, do they? We need to cry out to God. We need to shout out to God. Desperate situations sometimes call for desperate measures. And we see this so often in the Bible. The people in the crowd were very angry and they told him to be quiet. Don't keep disturbing everybody. Don't disturb Jesus. Are we fearful to speak out? Are we fearful to cry out to God? Whether it's in church or whether it's in our everyday lives, in case perhaps we are worried we will offend or worried that we will annoy people. But what did this man do? It says he shouted with all his might. In fact, he shouted even louder. He was determined to speak to Jesus. And Jesus stopped. And sometimes, like David, and we see this so often in the Psalms, don't we? We need to cry out louder, not because Jesus doesn't hear us. That's not the case at all. But to show him how desperate we are, how much we need him. That we don't care what folk think around us. That we're not bothered about that. That our need and our desire for Jesus is so great that we don't worry about what people think about us. 
Sometimes we have to cry out from the very depths of our soul. And Psalm 30 verse 2 says, well, David said, I cried unto you and you heard me. Don't be reluctant. Don't shy away. Come boldly. Hebrews 4 verse 16 tells us, come boldly that we may come freely and boldly to where love is enthroned. And coming back to the story, Jesus stopped. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus stopped. And he said, tell him to come to me. What did Bartimaeus do? Did he sit there thinking, well, Jesus, I can't move. I've sat here all this time. Don't you know I'm blind? No. Bartimaeus got up. He threw his cloak off. He jumped to his feet. And he came to Jesus. Now he did these things for two reasons. First of all, a long cloak could have tripped him up. But also that cloak identified him as a beggar. And he wanted to shake that off. It's important, I think, to notice that Jesus didn't go to him. He told Bartimaeus to come to Jesus. If we want Jesus desperately, are we willing to throw aside everything that stands in our way? All of it. And that could be a lot of things. There could be shame in our past. There could be failure in our past. Maybe we don't think we're good at anything. Maybe others have put labels on us. It could simply be fear. What are others going to say? What are others going to think about us? Could be our status. Maybe we think that we do something and it will affect the way people think of us. But this was between two people. This was between Bartimaeus and Jesus. Bartimaeus, you know, he didn't see that crowd. He didn't see them. He didn't hear their calling, telling him to be quiet. Should we not do that? Should we not care about what people say about us? Should our one urgent desire be to cry out to God? This man, this Bartimaeus, he just wanted to get to Jesus. Whatever it took, he wanted to get to Jesus. And we need to forget about everything and everybody around us. We need to remember. This is about Jesus and we can put our own name in there. This is about Jesus and me. And Jesus asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Now to us that may seem a bit of a funny question because it was obvious that Bartimaeus was blind. But Jesus asked him and Bartimaeus replied, please let me see. And Jesus' reply was, your faith has given you back your sight we may not be physically blind today, praise God. Maybe our eyes are misted over due to situations and things that are going on around us. There's lots of things that may mist over our eyes. Maybe we are enduring ill health. Maybe we are uh, enduring redundancy. Maybe we have lost our jobs due to the pandemic. Maybe we have family problems. Maybe our spiritual life is in decline. Maybe our view of Jesus has grown dim. Maybe we don't see him as we used to see him. This story shows that if we call out to God, if we shout out to God and let nothing hinder us, no body, no situation, nothing, shout loudly as Bartimaeus did, Jesus will tell us to come to him. We have to make that move towards Jesus. Bartimaeus could have stayed sitting down. As I said earlier, he could have said, Jesus, I'm blind, I can't come to you. And maybe there is something stopping us moving forward. We have to leave that behind. We have to walk boldly towards Jesus. We have to move towards him and shout out our need of him, ignoring everything and everyone around us. Bartimaeus had that faith. He had that faith to move to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, 
Your faith has given you back your sight. And I do believe that if we step forward in faith, ignoring everything and everyone around us, whether it's in church, whether it's in our daily lives, Jesus will honour our faith. And the things that maybe we thought we couldn't do, we will be able to do. Imagine Bartimaeus. Once his sight had been restored. Do you know, I, I thought about this the other day. The first thing that Bartimaeus would have seen once his sight was restored was the beautiful face of Jesus. Have we got the faith to believe that if we move towards Jesus, he will open our eyes to see Jesus again in all his risen glory. Today, let's shout out to God. Let's move towards him. Let's get a fresh vision of his face. Not his hand, what he can give us or not we can get from him. But let's get a fresh vision of that beautiful face of Jesus. Let's move towards Jesus, forgetting everything and everyone around him. Let's show Jesus how desperate we are to have a fresh vision of his face. And let's just concentrate on that, the beautiful face of Jesus. Shall we just pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful story that we read in your word about Bartimaeus. Lord, we thank you that even in that man's blindness, his faith was great. He wanted to see your face. He wanted to see again. He put aside all the things that would hold him back. He put aside his cloak. He got up off his feet and he ran to you. And Lord, I pray today that each one of us will have that faith, that we can put aside everything, every situation, every one that is around us, that really we don't care what people think about us. We don't care if people look at us, but that we have that faith to reach out to run to Jesus and to plead with him to open our eyes, perhaps our eyes that have become misted over, that we don't see perhaps as clearly as we used to that face of Jesus. And we give you all the glory in that lovely name of Jesus. Amen.
I hope you enjoyed that time of worship. I really hope God's blessed you. Now, if there's one thing I can say about today's message, one message which is overarching throughout it all, I would say this. I'd say that it's okay not to be okay. See, that's what we need to hear. We don't hear it very often, especially in the Western church, but we need to hear that. It's okay not to be okay. See, so many of us feel like we need to be a rock. We feel like we need to be a stable influence for those around us. We feel like we need to be the one that everybody can rely on and depend on. We need to have all the right answers for the right people at the right time to give them the right support. We want to be the dependable one. We want to be the the ones who people can always rely on. And you see, it's good to feel like this. It's good to be like that. And it's good to be a strong person of strong character that people know they can trust. But I think as much as that, we need to be showing the reality of what we're going through right now, of what you go through regularly, of what we all go through. And that's that sometimes it's okay not to be okay. Especially with the way things are at the minute. See, we're in the middle of going through this pandemic And running alongside the actual virus pandemic, there's also a pandemic of fear where people are so afraid to do anything because of the virus. And that's what's actually happening in the world around us. And you see, we end up being so afraid to set foot even outside our front doors because we're afraid of catching something, afraid. And the fear of it overwhelms us more. You see, it's such a tense time. And now... We're many months into this and we're also getting annoyed, we're getting frustrated, we're getting lonely, we're getting fearful, anxious, we're struggling and especially because there doesn't seem to be any end in sight, there's no solution and you see we're worried, we're concerned about this. So firstly I just want to just remind you that you know what, it's okay to be okay, it's okay to be where you are now. So whether you feel right now that you're really struggling or whether you feel you're okay right now, if you feel it's okay, then just, if you feel okay, just take note of when this message was preached so you can remind yourself in a few weeks or months or years time that you know what, I was struggling and then just remind yourself of this message that you know what, it's okay not to be okay. So however you feel right now, just know that God's okay with you not feeling okay. See, sometimes we try and sort ourselves out before coming to God, before coming to church and before asking people around us. Because we think, what if people knew I was struggling? What if people, you know, what will they think about me? What will they think about, uh, I'm supposed to be the rock, I'm supposed to be the dependable one. You see, I remember I was really struggling a couple of years ago whenever Katie had the miscarriage. I went through a really hard time and I just wanted to shy away. I wanted to become a recluse. I just wanted to hide from life and hide from everybody. And it was okay. It's okay to feel like that. It's okay to feel in the middle of certain situations, and especially one like that. It's okay to feel that way. So I was right to feel that way. And sometimes we rush so hard to get through things that we don't allow ourselves to journey through what God wants to do, through guiding us through that situation, for teaching us in that situation and loving on us in that situation. I've heard it said like this, how will we know that God is the lily in the valley if we never venture through some valleys? So maybe you're okay, maybe you're not. If you're not feeling okay right now, I just want you to know it's okay. I want you to know that it's okay to be where you are. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to wrestle with things. And you know what? I'm not going to jump to to our go-to verses. We've got go-to Bible verses we go to when we know things are okay. And yes, they're promises of God and they're amazing to cling on to. The thing is, we have to let people sometimes journey through the pain. See, I know it's in me, and I'm sure it's in a lot of you, to always want to help people, to give them solutions to the problems around them, to give them reassurance. But we need to let people express. We've got to be careful not to rush so hard for the solutions that we don't let people journey through the situation they're in, through the pain of the situation they're in. 
See, we need to help them on the journey they're on, wherever they're going. And we need to let them experience and process the thoughts around it and express how they feel about it right now. We don't always rush to a solution. We don't always worry if even if they blame God. It's okay for them to turn around sometimes and even blame God in the middle of that situation because that's what pain does. It reveals things. And you see, if someone suffers from depression, then you don't just give them solutions. You journey with them through it. You don't just try and fix them in an instant by quoting a, a Bible verse to them. You ask God for wisdom and how to deal with people. You let God guide you. Sometimes you need to share a verse, sometimes you don't. We always need to remember that it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to be in that place. Now we've been looking at Elijah. And since he burst onto the scene, he has had three intense years of ministry. Three intense years of, of things that he's been doing. Firstly, he prophesied a drought on the land. A drought on the people of Israel. And then the drought set in. And then he had to run for his life. He had to run and hide for three years. He's seen God do miracle after miracle. He daily trusted God for to bring him his food. Firstly, through ravens. And ravens just to bring him food as he drunk from the brook and then ate the food that the ravens brought. And then he went and stayed with a widow and her son whenever they miraculously had the bottles. He even raised someone from the dead. And then he went on and he faced up to 850 prophets against himself, the prophets of Baal and Asherah. And then he prayed and fire fell down from heaven. He prayed and it started raining again. And then he ran faster than a chariot. And now some scholars say it's between 17 to 30 miles he ran for faster than a chariot. Now that's a big run. God had supernaturally enabled him to do that. He had spent three busy years building up over these three years to that crescendo. And with all that he had seen God do, with all the things you think, man, that guy's got it made. He's going to be okay. He's going to be okay with God. You'd think he's so stable. And the thing is, nothing could shake him. It's not true. Something shook him. And it mightn't even be the thing that you expected. So let's read in 1 Kings 19 together. From verse 1. It said, Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, and now he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. She indirectly said, I'm going to take your life. See, all King Ahab was doing was, this is what happened yesterday. I can't believe this is what happened. But then Jezebel was like, all of her friends, the prophets, have been killed. Her beliefs had been disproved and shaken. And she wanted revenge. She was angry about this. So all she did was send a threat to Elijah. And you think with everything that Elijah has seen God do, he'd be okay with somebody just going, I'm going to kill you. You know what, she didn't even come and do it to his face. She said it through someone else. She sends someone who says, I'm going to kill you. But no, Elijah fell apart. Elijah ran away. Let's read on from verse 3. From verse 3 it said, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. Now what a journey Elijah had been on to do that. He hit a wall. He literally didn't know how to cope. He didn't know how to cope with this threat on his life. So literally it says he ran for his life. He ran as if his life depended on it. And then he, not only that, he then isolated himself from everyone around him. His servant, who's supposed to be the one who never leaves his side, he, sent him, he left him in Beersheba and he went away. 
And he didn't just go across the road, he went all the way a day's walk into the wilderness. He walked a day. Like, how far can you walk in a day? Quite a distance. So he went to the middle of nowhere. He really just wanted to get away from everyone. And he literally sat down under a bush and just said, God, kill me now. He just said, God, take my life. He felt so useless. He felt like he was a failure. He felt like everything that he had tried to do and everything that he had tried to, to bring back to the people of God was it was falling apart. It was a mistake. He even said, I'm no better than any of my ancestors. He needed to know that it was okay not to be okay. And we need to make sure that no matter how strong or weak somebody has been in our life, no matter how big of an influence or little of an influence, that they're allowed to feel how they feel. They're allowed to feel how they feel right now. And I want you to know today that even if yesterday you were doing miracles for God, that you were on fire for God in ways that you can just barely begin to dream or imagine, that if you call fire down from heaven and you run faster than chariots, that today, if you're not feeling okay, it's okay. It's okay. Don't be dismayed. Don't let the thought of not being okay drive a wedge between you and God to stop you from just being you and being who you are right now. Elijah just sat down and asked God to kill him. But what, could, what did God do? God didn't honour that request, thankfully. It says, all at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. See, God didn't come swooping down with some amazing, miraculous miracle. He didn't try and do something that displayed all the glory of God. He didn't shout at Elijah. He didn't tell him off. He didn't make him feel useless. He didn't make him do anything. He didn't make him feel... All God did was give him something to eat. He gave him something to replenish himself. And if you really feel like you're struggling, I want you to know that God wants to pull alongside you today. If you're feeling worried or you're struggling or you feel abandoned, if you're tired, if you're drained, if you feel like a failure or anything like that, I want you to know the good news of God. That God wants to make you something fresh that will replenish your strength. Freshly baked bread, something that will give you the nourishment you need. Something that will give you something that you desire in your hearts. See, we pray regularly as part of the Lord's Prayer that you give us our daily bread. And this was God giving Elijah something to nourish him. See, God will not come to destroy you. He'll not come to tell you off. He'll come and he'll give you something to replenish you and he'll give you some rest. He will be the still waters that we talk about. The still waters that we lie beside the gentle river. He wants to restore our souls. He gave Elijah food and water and then let him rest. Elijah went back to sleep. And then verse 7 it says this. Then the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him. He said, get up and eat. For the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. That's refreshing, isn't it? That God let Elijah rest when he needed it. And then he gave him more food, he gave him more nourishment, and he told him to prepare. He said, eat and drink. Eat this, drink it, because the journey that you're going to go on, we're going to journey through this. You don't have the strength to do this on your own, so eat what I give you and you'll be fine. And some of us need to hear that today. Some of you need to hear that right now, the journey that you're on seems too much, but what God gives you will be enough to sustain you. It's okay not to be okay, and as part of that journey, God will give you 
in the right timing, right things to help you through that process and come out the other side. We don't have the strength to do this alone, but with what God gives us, what God gives me, it will give me the strength to make it through. You need to tell yourself that. See, Elijah had the strength because God gave him what he needed to sustain him. You need to hear that today. God will give you the strength and give you what you need to sustain you through that. If you're disheartened by things around you, by either the whole COVID situation or even other things, if it's stripping away your faith, if it's stripping you back, if you're struggling, God wants to give you what you need to make it to where you have to go to, to do what he has asked you to do. See, Elijah ate, and then he went on the journey, and he journeyed with God for 40 days and 40 nights. See, sometimes we need to go on a journey with God, the journey that he's placed before us, the journey which he's going to lead us through. It's not an end destination, it's through whatever you're going through. Listen to God and be open to his leading as he takes you through this journey. See, God led Elijah to his mountain. He led Elijah to himself. See, in the next, next sermon, I'm going to preach a little bit more about what God did there. But today I just want to talk about starting the journey. See, we've got a journey back to where God is. We've got it go to where God is, back to that place where we know the presence of God, back to that place to where we know. The same next week we're going to look at the rest of the passage, but firstly I just want to remind you of the three simple things from today. Firstly, that it's okay not to be okay. Secondly, that God will replenish you with food, with drink, with rest, whenever you are weak, whenever you're struggling and then he's going to prepare you for a journey back to himself he'll give you what you need for this journey if you just claim it and take it in faith and then we start walking on the journey in faith the journey back to god may god bless you all as you journey with him as you journey to him to the mountain let's just pray together God, I thank you that whether we feel on top of the world or whether we're at the end of ourselves, whether we feel like we're flying or whether we feel like we can barely move an inch, God, you're with us. You're with us every step of these journeys. You're with us every moment of these journeys. So God, we trust in you and you alone. We trust and put our faith in what you're saying over us and in us and through us. God, may we May we have the faith to stop and speak to you. And then may we listen to what you have to say. May we take the replenishment you give us as you restore us and restore our souls. May we take that and take the rest you give and trust in the daily bread that you give us that will give us the strength for the journeys we need to go on to come back to you. God, we know we always regularly walk away from you. We stray from the path that we walk, uh, that you've placed before us to walk on. So God, lead us back onto your path. Lead us back into your righteous ways. Lead us back into your presence, God. God, thank you so much that you restore us, that you do replenish us. And then God, give us the strength to journey with you back into your presence, back into you, into your sanctuary God. God lead us on these pathways that lead to everlasting life, that lead to life to the full, that lead to true life. God be with us. God journey with us. God give us the peace where we have none. God still the storms in our hearts. God may nothing COVID related, may nothing touch us. May nothing touch our faith, our faith, God. God, may nothing else that tries to press in, may nothing else take control. God, we will not be afraid. Why? Because we trust in you. 
we have a holy and reverent fear of a God that loves us. So God bless us as you lead us on your pathways and leading us into your presence. Amen. I really pray this message will have challenged you today. If you need to talk to someone, don't be afraid to drop us a, a message, drop us a comment, drop us um, a, a text message or a phone call. Don't be afraid to get in touch. If you need help, that's what we're here for. We're here to journey with you, to encourage you, to listen. I just really pray that wherever you are in your journey, just open up, open up to God. Allow God to replenish you, allow God to restore you, allow God to lead you on the next phase of your journey. If you're walking with God, I encourage you to continue that journey because God is leading us deeper into Him and closer to Him and into His presence so that we can hear His voice and do what He asks us to do. May God bless you this week. May you know His love as it surrounds you this week. May you know His guidance as it surrounds you this week. May God just bless you and keep you Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he give you his peace. God bless you all. See you next week.